The armorer for the film Rust is set to receive her sentencing for involuntary manslaughter tomorrow. Hannah Gutierrez-Reed has been convicted for her role in the 2021 accidental shooting of Helena Hutchins. Now prosecutors say she should receive the maximum 18-month sentence after revealing she was heard in recorded jail phone conversations calling the trial jurors idiots and a-holes. The woman's defense attorneys are arguing she should receive a so-called conditional discharge. So let's talk about what that is. Here to talk more about the criminal uh, trial, criminal trial attorney, News Nation legal analyst Sarah Azari. Sarah, thanks so much for being here. Of course, it's good to see you. So Sarah, uh, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed could be sentenced to as much as 18 months in prison. What are you expecting tomorrow? So <laughs> I'm expecting some time, uh, maybe even 18 months. You know, 18 months is shockingly low for involuntary manslaughter when you look at the same law, uh, you know, same offense and under other laws in other states. Um, it's pretty low. And we have a situation here when, you know, when you go before a trial judge to get sentenced, the trial judge is supposed to give you a sentence that is just but not greater than necessary to punish and deter. And they look at aggravating circumstances, mitigating circumstances, circumstances from both from within the case, the facts that they saw during the trial play out, and also individual characteristics. We don't know what those are with respect to Hannah, if she has an addiction, if she has any sort of mitigation. But the case itself, these facts were terrible, uh, Natasha. As you remember, she never checked on the guns. She um, was uh, mixing cocaine with guns. Uh, she didn't do safety checks. I mean, these are pretty egregious circumstances that, in my opinion, warrant even the 18-month max. Mm. I appreciate you highlighting those circumstances. I do want to ask about the derogatory comments that that phone call that she made about jurors. Is this going to impact the length of her sentence? How important is this? Does it show lack of remorse? Yeah, it definitely shows lack of remorse. It's really pompous and, and obnoxious and entitled and all of these things. Uh, you know, the sentiment itself, I'm sure every felon convicted by jury feels that way to some extent. The stupidity is to make these comments on a jail call that's monitored and recorded, and it's not with your lawyer, so it's not privileged. And, you know, the reason I say this is because she's asking for conditional discharge, which is yet another gift under New Mexico law, which is a essentially not only give me probation, but completely set aside the conviction if I successfully complete probation. So she's asking to walk away with nothing, and yet she's making these comments on recorded jail calls. So, you know, that that's where I'm going, whoa, you know, you should be on the best behavior right now pending sentencing. I mean, what was she thinking? Is it that it was a paralegal, right? I mean, is there any way she thought that it was privileged and it just wasn't? Well, she, I think she was a male attorney, so uh, mm. yeah, I mean, she, she might have been under the impression. I, you can argue that, but I think, I think, given the context, maybe she's communicated with this paralegal before, um, and it's going to be a battle. I mean, I don't think we're going to get there just for sentencing. Sentencing is tomorrow, okay. and. You know, the, the judge can always split the baby and say, OK, you want nothing. Um, you want probation and really nothing, no conviction. And you want the max. So I'm going to give you something in between. I think to the extent that she may have had that opportunity, she may have closed the door on that, given mm. these calls. Mm. And meanwhile, she says that she thinks Alec Baldwin should go to jail. She is upset that he didn't come to her trial. What is your take on that? Yeah, it's like, wah, wah, you didn't come to my party. I'm not going to your party. And it, that's not what this is about. Both of these witnesses are hostile towards the prosecution and each other. So the strategy is not good to have them testify in each, in each other's trials. Um, also, Natasha, there's a Fifth Amendment protection against um, uh, self-incrimination. And so, you know, she doesn't want to, she has an appeal. You know, she's going to appeal the conviction. She shouldn't be testifying, even if he subpoenaed her. And he will, he definitely didn't testify at her trial because for the same reason, he has a Fifth Amendment. They're hostile. They're not going to testify for one another. But if she's subpoenaed, it is a court order. She has to show up, and then she can invoke her fifth. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.